Some big egos are about to be shattered. That's right. Today, we are going to be talking about the hardest college majors that you can get in college. That's right. You think you're smarter than me? Yeah. Okay. Well, you, you probably are. Yeah, fair play. But anyways, I lived in a scholarship hall with 50 dudes from all different types of majors and I could tell which ones had to study all the time, which ones were stressed out all the time, and which ones were just partying like it's 1989. And I am just gonna tell you right away, you are probably gonna be surprised by this list. Engineering, the one that you all think is gonna be number one, isn't. So before we begin this video, right after you boop the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm, go down below and type what degree you think is going to be the most difficult. All right, so starting the list off, number eight is going to be biology. And of course, there are a ton of different variations of this degree. One of them would be cell and molecular biology, for instance. And the average student is going to spend around 18 hours and 40 minutes preparing for these classes every single week. Now, now, this is going to be especially hard for people who don't have very good memory. So if someone has an incredible memory, this one might be one of the easiest ones you could possibly get. But everybody's going to be different. I happen to think that my memory isn't all that great. And so some of the hardest classes for me were memory intensive classes like anatomy, for instance. However, you are going to get a good dose of other subjects as well. So for cellular and molecular biology, for instance, you are going to be taking a lot of chemistry classes. In fact, there are going to be many courses you take that are going to require a tremendous amount of chemistry and mathematics. So some of them are going to include chemistry, biology, math, biochemistry, ecology, marine molecular ecology, and immunology. <sighs> On top of that is going to require quite a bit of lab experience. Now, for some people, you're going to love labs. For other people, they're really annoying because a lot of the time you have to go back and, you know, check the Petri dish to see what's going on in there. And if you mess anything up, then you have to start over again. People who have worked in labs a lot will know exactly what I'm talking about. And after studying biology, you will never be able to do a normal handshake again without cringing, especially after 2020. All right, so this is one that pretty much everyone who's going for a health or science degree is going to have to take plenty of. Now, the average hour studying for class each week is going to be just above 18. Some of the classes you're going to take are going to be general chemistry, physics, biology, organic chemistry, and maybe physical chemistry as well. And then on top of that, you're going to have to take some of the standard classes that pretty much everyone in science and math has to take, like statistics and calculus. Now, chemistry majors are going to spend a ton of time in the lab, working with different chemicals, doing different experiments. And then after you're done, you have to make lab reports, which those can take a long time. Now, chemistry is going to have quite a bit of memorization. So if you're someone who's pretty weak in that department, like me, it might be a little more difficult for you. But at the same time, it's also going to be conceptually more difficult than something like biology. A lot of people have trouble with classes like organic and physical chemistry. And the reason for this is because there's a lot of problem solving there. You're going to have to be, you know, visualizing different chemicals in your head and figuring out what happens when they collide. And you have to think about what happens on a micro level as well as a macro level. So yeah, if you're somebody who wants to do a hard science like this and challenge yourself, chemistry can be pretty tough. A lot of people go for biochemistry where they get a good mixture of biology and chemistry. And this is really great if you're trying to become a doctor or maybe a PA, something along those lines. All right, so number six on the list, everybody's been waiting for this one. It is going to be computer science. I know it, I know it. So you know I had to put this one in the video somewhere. You saw my shot? I took it. Now this one is increasingly in high demand in terms of the skills that it teaches you. However, it is relatively rigorous. You are going to spend a ton of time learning how to troubleshoot and problem solve as well as learning how to code. Now on top of that, you are going to be studying a good amount of mathematics as well as the fundamentals of how computers work in general. Some of the classes you might take would include algorithms, discrete structures, computer architecture, C++, Python, Java, as well as many other types of languages. Those who love tinkering with computers and love a challenge may find a good match with this degree. I, I see this as an absolute win. Number five on the list is going to be architecture. Now, when it comes to the sheer amount of time you spend studying, it's about 22 hours a week, which is the highest on the entire list. So you could make a good argument that architecture is the hardest. And when it comes to architecture, you have to be extremely well-rounded. So not only do you have to know a lot of mathematics and physics, but you have to know the history as well. And then on top of that, you have to be very well versed in art. Architecture is extremely interdisciplinary. So you could
could argue in some ways this could be the hardest on the entire list. And again, it's really gonna come down to the person, your own personal strengths, what you like, what you don't like, and your passions. But when you're talking about the average person, I think there are some on the list that are going to be even more difficult. Number four on the list is going to be math. Math is hard. Now math is almost like the language of the universe because everybody can look at a math equation and it really doesn't matter what language you speak, they understand it. Two plus two will always equal four, although when it gets complicated, it might look like a foreign language. Now, if you are somebody who understands the language of math, try not to get too excited here just because you're good at something that most people hate. Sorry, sorry. I now, along with taking the standard classes that everybody else is going to take, like calculus and statistics, you are going to be diving much more deep when it comes to mathematics. We're going to be talking about differential equations, single and multivariable calculus, linear and abstract algebra, real analysis, probability, and often computer science. Now, some schools are a little bit different than others. Some of them focus more on the theoretical mathematics side of things, and then some of them focus on more practical math. But regardless, it is going to be very challenging challenging, especially if you consider the average person just isn't all that good at math. However, if you're somebody who loves math and you're really smart, this might be pretty easy for you. Number three on the list is probably going to come as a surprise, but it's going to be the pre-med track. Now, this isn't technically a major, but it's a bunch of classes that you have to take if you want to apply to medical school. And you can technically major in just about anything in order to get into medical school as long as you take these core classes. And the classes themselves aren't necessarily as hard as a lot of the other ones on this list. What makes this really hard is the fact that you have to get ridiculously good grades in order to get into medical school. So the average GPA for people who get into medical school is about 3.71. And especially when you consider that a lot of them come from the plus minus system, that's extremely impressive. So with the plus minus system, if you get anywhere between 90 to 94%, that means you get an A minus. That is a 3.7 GPA. So these people who get into medical school, if they come from a plus minus system are literally averaging an A. So to be honest, a lot of these classes aren't gonna be the most difficult. I mean, physical chemistry, organic chemistry can be pretty tough, but they aren't gonna be like incredibly difficult. There's gonna be a lot of memorization involved, for instance, so there, you are gonna be studying quite a bit, but realistically speaking, they're not gonna be as hard as like engineering or a lot of the math classes. But what makes these so difficult is you pretty much have to get an A in every single class. And then of course, everybody else in the class is also on the pre-med track and they're trying to get an A too. And on top of that, if you wanted to get into med school, you have to do a lot of extracurriculars like shadowing, getting a job, internships, etc. Seriously, when I was in undergrad and I was taking these science classes, it seemed like every person I met told me that they were pre-med. And then at the end of the three years or so, a lot of them had switched to nursing or pharmacy or something else because of how rigorous this is. And I know one person who applied to med school four years in a row, that's right. So she graduated from college, she applied that year, she got rejected four years in a row and then she finally gave up. Another person applied three years in a row and finally got accepted on the fourth year. So for that reason, the pre-med track is extremely competitive. And I guess you could add like a bunch of other things in here. Like let's say you're trying to go to a top law school that's probably also going to be very competitive as well. Number two on the list is going to be, drum roll please, engineering. All right, so I put this one as number two on the list and you know what that means. I'm going to get a bunch of triggered engineer comments. They're gonna be telling me down below why they should have been number one on the list. Very sad. But the truth is maybe it actually is number one and I just put it as number two because I might get a bunch of comments and that'll trigger the YouTube algorithm. Just kidding, but this one is going to have the second most amount of time when it comes to studying every week. Most of the majors are gonna range somewhere around 20 hours a week in studying alone. Now, of course, some of the engineering majors are gonna be harder than others. There's a lot of arguments here about which one is the hardest. Most people say electrical, chemical, and then a lot of really smart people go into aerospace engineering engineering, so those three are probably the hardest, but again, a lot of argument there. Let me know down in the comments which ones you personally believe are the hardest. I will say from my own personal experience, the smartest person I've ever met in my entire life was an aerospace engineer. It was one of my roommates back in college when I lived in a scholarship hall. This guy was so smart, it's actually painful to think about, okay? Like literally the smartest person I've ever met. First of all, he had a photographic memory or an eidetic memory. He could remember just about anything, literally reading it one time, didn't have to write it down, 
didn't have to read it a second time. It was absolutely ridiculous how good his memory was. On top of that, his mathematical ability and just quantitative ability and just problem solving in general was ridiculously good. I remember two particular occasions that really stand out to me, but honestly, there were a lot more than this. I remember a couple of my friends and I, I think we were on Zoom or some other platform where you can like talk to each other. And we were all doing this quiz where you type in the names of Harry Potter characters. Okay, so apparently there's like over 500 Harry Potter characters and you'd like type in the name and see how many of them you could actually remember from the book. And I forgot the exact number, but I think we got to somewhere around like 200 and we couldn't think of any more at that point. My roommate walks into the room, he asks me what I'm doing, and he just starts like naming off characters just off the top of his head. And I start like typing them in and he names off like an extra 150 characters that we didn't even think of just off the top of his head. He's only read each of the books one time and some of the other people that were on this quiz had read them like, you know, two or three times and he still just remembered. And not only did he remember the first name, right, on this quiz, all you had to do is just type in the first name and, and that was good, but he would also remember their last names as well. Wow, he is so great. And honestly, I think he probably could have gotten to like 450 out of 500, whatever the max was, if he wanted to, but he just got bored after a while. And then the second occasion that I remember with this guy was he, I was studying for a really difficult chemistry test. I think it was like organic chemistry. And he just walked into the room, you know, I was studying this part and I was having a lot of trouble with it and it was really frustrating. And you know, he starts talking to me and I'm just telling him about how, you know, this part is really difficult. He looks at it for like 30 seconds and he tells me what the answer is. And he's never even taken this chemistry class before. He told me that he knew the answer because he studied like AP chemistry in high school and he read part of the chapter that he wasn't even supposed to read and he remembered the answer from there and he was just able to like infer or deduct the rest of it just off the top of his head. It was like a really complicated thing. It was not not easy at all. So yeah, like these guys are like next level. Some of these, some of these engineers are just like smart as just, just absolutely ridiculous how smart they are. I remember this guy during finals he would he would just play Skyrim the whole time like he didn't study for any of his finals he would play Skyrim while everybody else in the scholarship hall was studying like crazy like 40 to 60 hours a week probably he was just playing Skyrim the whole time and then he'd ace all of his tests he got a 4.0 he won some kind of international aerospace competition and he got like a super good like manager job right out of college. Smartest guy I've ever met without a doubt. But with that being said, there is one type of degree that is even more difficult than engineering degrees. Can you guess the name of the major? The name is... John C. <laughs> Just kidding, it's actually physics and for normal people, physics looks kind of like this. But yeah, no, physics, in my opinion, is probably the most difficult major that you can take. Not only are you gonna be studying a lot of like theoretical stuff like mathematics, but you have to be able to apply that to real world problems. You are going to be studying quantum physics, electricity, uh, magnetism, vibrations, thermodynamics, gravity, mathematics. Just it, It's just a never ending stream of extremely difficult classes. Now this one is going to be in the top five when it comes to the amount of time you have to spend studying, but the reason this is number one is because of the fact that physics degree graduates have the highest IQs out of all the different types of majors. That's right, physics majors are big brain. They have the highest IQs out of all the different majors at about 350. Just kidding, it's about 133 according to data at the Educational Testing Service. So basically what that means, an IQ of 130 means you're in the top 2% of intelligence and some people would actually consider that to be genius. At the very least, this is considered to be borderline genius so the average physics major, just, just like your average Joe sitting in a physics class, is a borderline genius. Now, math and engineering weren't far behind, and a dark horse there was actually philosophy. Philosophy grads are very smart, even though it's not necessarily an extremely rigorous major. They're really intelligent. And the significance of this is if you are competing against other people where just the average Joe in the class, the average major is a borderline genius, that means that the professor can make the test ridiculously hard. I mean, think about it. It makes total sense. Usually colleges work on the curve. You know, they'll have a certain percentage of the class that gets an A and a B, etc. And so they're just going to make the test harder and harder until that curve is reached. But that's just my opinion. Don't get mad about it or anything. Let me know 
know what you guys think down below. If you haven't done it already, go ahead and check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, ring that, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video, and I will catch you guys later. Thank you.